tell us who you are and a bit about your background. Uh, hi, Ben. Uh, my name is Pratik Rungta. Uh, I'm a web developer and co-founder at Miranj. Uh, Miranj is a web studio uh, in New Delhi, which is in India. And we've been uh, building content heavy websites, um, practicing information architecture and uh, like striving to, to put out simple but functional and robust websites that, that stand the test of time and that last for a long time. Um, and we've been working with Craft for almost six years now. Uh, we first came across Craft, I think in 2014 uh, when we used it on one of our projects and we absolutely loved it. And uh, we've been uh, using it on a lot of other projects since then. Uh, and we've also become a craft partner now. So yeah. Great. And you uh, spoke at the last craft conference in Montreal. I, Tell I us did. a bit about that. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was graciously uh, offered a chance to uh, talk at uh, Dotall 2019 at Montreal, uh, where I uh, spoke about some of the different template uh, caching techniques that we have uh, been using uh, on one of our clients' uh, uh, high traffic website. Uh, so I shared um, whatever we had learned with, with the uh, craft community uh, with the hope that you know, someone else would also find it useful. Awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed that talk and I heard a lot of other people say the same. So if you're, if you're out there and enjoy performance optimization on craft sites, check out Pratik's talk on the .all site. Today we're going to be talking about routing and a plugin called Router that you built to solve a problem on, on a project you were working on. And so let's start with what, what problem did you run into that craft was unable to solve that led you down this path? Um, so that's right. We were working on a, a website, which was a um, large information portal. Um, that would be a fair way to think about it. Um, it had several uh, typical sections, what you might expect in a website, like news, articles, uh, certain resources. Um, but in addition to these, um, the website also had um, a lot of events, jobs, uh, grants, almost uh, you could think of them as classified sections like a mini Craigslist um, of a collection of events and, and jobs and grants. And um, because this was a classified uh, section, uh, there were uh, jobs, grants, events, et cetera, pouring in from a lot of different uh, uh, communities in the, that website's network. And um, there was a large, fairly large volume. So not every single job, for example, would be of interest to every visitor of that website. And uh, so we needed to give the visitors a quick and easy way to uh, to find the content that they were truly interested in. Like, let's take jobs, for example. Uh, you might be looking for a certain kind of engagement, like you might be looking for a full-time job only and not for part-time jobs. So when uh, uh, you, we want to enable you to go to the jobs page and click on part-time if you only want part-time or full-time if you only want full-time. You might be looking for jobs only in a particular location, or for instance, in, in these days, you might be looking for a remote job um, because you don't want to be leaving home. Um, and uh, then you might have a certain qualification. Uh, this was an academic site. So, um, so uh, certain jobs require you to be a postdoctorate or require you to be a master's a graduate and so forth. So you want to filter, filter down jobs by that. Um, you might want to filter down jobs by industry or by the role. So, uh, so these are some of the... So it was uh, the advanced filtering kind of, that was the key feature that you needed that was harder to do with the default? Uh, right. So we, we, we wanted to uh, easily enable people to filter down things using simple criteria. I mean, uh, I, I don't uh, go ahead and call these advanced filtering because uh, often these things are uh, used by us, even on, on simple things like blogs, like uh, on blog, we might have an archive page, but we usually go ahead and also add the ability to view the archives only for a particular year. Like you might mm -hmm. want to see all your blog posts published only into 2019. And mm -hmm. uh, you could think of that as a filter as well. Like 2019 is a filter on that blog archive page. Uh, but uh, you won't usually call it an advanced filter. So um, the, the point was for us to 
enable simple like if it's just one one criteria you, you need to filter by then it seems quite straightforward but when you need to start adding up more than one criteria then it starts feeling like uh, this has become complicated um, mm. but we wanted to retain that simplicity of um, being able to filter just by an, by ear um, and you know maybe in addition to ear you want to filter by a category in addition to a category you want to filter by an author uh, so mm -hmm. if you wanted to just create a blog page which showed all posts by a particular author, that's straightforward. But you want to show a blog page that shows all posts by a particular author in a particular year, that starts becoming a little not so simple. Yeah. And when you say when it feels more complicated, I think this is a this is an emotion that we often experience as developers, you know, when planning out websites, when coding. So when you say when it starts to feel more complicated, are you referring to the code or the paper plan or what moment do you find yourself in when you kind of see yourself going from default functionality to considering a custom solution? That's a great thing you, you caught on there, Ben. Um, when, when I'm saying it starts feeling more complicated right now, I am explicitly referring to the, the code part, the implementation part of it. And, and I'm not thinking of the, the front end UI. I'm not thinking of, of uh, how exactly we will present the filters, uh, what happens when someone clicks on a filter, what is the UI we show, how do we communicate what is an active filter. Mm -hmm. I am not yet thinking of that part. I'm thinking of the part where in craft, if we wanna uh, create a new section, uh, we want and we want to enable each entry to have its own URL we can easily enter in the URL field, um, the section handle and, and maybe the slug and craft builds out URLs for us. And when you hit that page, you get a variable with um, the variable entry with your element pre-selected, right? Mm -hmm. That is simple and straightforward. Um, if you want to have a page which shows all blog posts by a particular year, then you've got to go and define a URL rule, uh, either mm -hmm. via, your, via the control panel or in the in the routes.php file uh, in your config section and when you define say uh, a regular expression to capture all the years uh, and pass that as a as a variable to your template then uh, from that point on the 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 steps you have to do to to be able to arrive at the the right set of entries that is the part that i was referring to uh, as getting complicated once you uh, go on from just here and you add category and author and other things onto it. Nice. Yeah. Cause in craft, you've got your entry URI field, which you either start having to add twig code into, yep. which is a lot of code for a little input field, or you've got the dynamic route section in the control panel, but that's pretty limited in what variables you can be targeting and, and how they behave. And so it, it, you know, then, then you're in the routes.php file and you're starting to build more complex rules. And it sounds like you went one step further here and said, well, why don't I embrace what I'm doing in a plugin? That's right. So um, I'll just share the, the workflow that we found ourselves repeating, which we felt then that, that, you know, as developers, we should not be repeating ourselves and uh, we're um, duplicating code. So uh, why don't we abstract this out? So the workflow was that for every new filter, we had to create a new URL uh, rule in our routes.php, a new dynamic URL. And um, if we wanted to have the ability to, have, uh, to chain multiple filters, then say we've already got two filters on a page, like on the jobs page, we've got um, uh, engagement, which is half time or full time, and we've got say location. Um, mm -hmm. So we have to now define three rules, not just two rules, because one rule is if it's only engagement, the other rule is if it's only location. And the third rule is if you have both engagement as well as location. Now, when you add a third filter to this, then you have to add three more rules, uh, not just one more rule. And then if, when you go for a fourth and a fifth, then I don't think you even want to do the math. But I, I, I feel the mathematician is the one that truly appreciates what's happening <laughs> right now as you as you move into exponential uh, Relation. Yeah. Uh, so first, just the, the so just the number of URL rules you would have to define um, the routes that would, would get crazy. Now, when we get to the template itself, you, for for each new filter criteria that you've defined, 
you've got to check is this variable defined like mm -hmm. is year defined is category defined if category is defined then you want to actually validate that the category slug uh, is an actual category element uh, and not just some random um, gibberish that has been typed out in the url bar so you've got to execute a query you'll probably do a craft of categories dot group um, locations uh, and dot slug and then you'll put in your category slug there and then if that turns out to be a valid category a valid location that you have in your database then you will go ahead and add that as a related to pa parameter in your uh, entries query and you repeat this for uh, all the different criteria that you have and if, if at all you encounter a single invalid one then you got to throw a 404 um, and so this is something that we found ourselves repeating again and again and we did this for jobs then we did this for grants then we did this for events uh, so not only was there a lot of repetition within a section but uh, when you then went ahead and uh, did it on different sections then just uh, exploded awesome all right, well then let's take a look at some code and see how this works. Okay, so uh, what I've done is I've taken um, Craft CMS's uh, starter blog project uh, and I've uh, created a, a local installation of that on my system. Uh, and I've gone ahead and um, uh, added, so, so uh, the blog project is a, is a very simple blog as you would expect, uh, it has, um, a blog section where you can create blog posts and uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and added a new section called regions where I've defined um, uh, Asia, Europe, North America and I've also added a new category group called topics um, and I've put some topics there and I've gone and created uh, some entries in my blog um, like a travel blog uh, so one entry for, for each location and for each entry, I have uh, then further tagged the entry with the right topic and the right region that the location belongs to mm -hmm. uh, in order to demonstrate the functionality of the router plug. So um, this is Craft's uh, starter blog project homepage, uh, which just lists all the posts that are in the blog. Um, now, if we wanted to create an archive page where we wanted to show all the posts, then um, we could perhaps, uh, right now we're not focusing on the design, so we could use the same template. And uh, I've done just that. Here we have our, our, archi our archive page template where um, it, it's pretty straightforward. We're uh, querying um, uh, the craft entries for the blog section and we're showing 10 posts. Uh, and we've given it a title called archives. And if we switch to the browser and if we go to slash archive, then it works as you would expect. Uh, the reason this URL works is because we have um, defined uh, a new URL, dynamic URL rule in our routes.php file, which says that, you know, point our archive page to this particular template. So Craft does that. Now, if we wanted to uh, add functionality here, which uh, let us view archives by year, like you can see that the first three entries are to 2019, the next three are 2018, and we want to just be able to see 2018, for, in for instance. Right now, we get a 404. Uh, so let's, let's go and enable this, uh, the way you would do it in Craft natively. Uh, I'm just going to copy paste some code here that I've, I've pre-prepared uh, to be uh, faster in the demo. So um, we add a new segment to the URL, which is the year, uh, four digits, and then we pass it to the same template. And inside of our template, we now look for um, the year uh, before we execute our uh, query. We, we go ahead and we see if year is defined. Then uh, we add uh, year as a criteria to the query. We want to get post after the 1st January of that year. And we want to get post before the 1st of January of the next year. So we add this and if we save these files and we switch to our browser. And voila, we now have post from 2018. Nice. Now so. we um, want to go ahead and also filter by region. So in that case, uh, we repeat the same process where 
uh, along with the ear, we also want to add um, a rule which lets us capture the region. So if we, we go with this uh, in hyphen region uh, slug, so this, this, uh, this has to be a, a slug of the element. And uh, when it finds that, graph will store that in a variable called region and pass it to our template. So inside of our template, we will then go ahead and do something similar to what we did for the year. We will look for the region, sorry. We will look for the region. Uh, if the region is defined, then we query our region section with the slug. And uh, if we do indeed find a valid region, then we add that as a related to parameter on a query. If we don't, then we uh, throw a 404 page. And let's go ahead and save this and change our URL to in uh, Asia. And now we can get our uh, blog posts that are about regions in Asia. Now, what if we want to do something like we want all uh, Asian blog posts, but, but in 2018. So we want to combine two of these. We want to combine the year as well as the region. So uh, that doesn't work right now. Uh, we will have to add the URL rule to make that work. So let's do that. So what we've done in this case is uh, our first segment is the year and the second segment is the region. And we pass this to our template and inside our template, uh, we don't have to do anything, anything new this time because uh, if the year is defined, then the year condition is added to the template. And if the region is defined, then the region template, the region condition is added to the template. And if we switch to our browser, so we have uh, 2018 and a region in Asia that works. But now, uh, what if we wanted to add a topic as a filter as well? Like we wanted 2018 in Asia and uh, we wanted to see um, beach, beaches in Asia, right? Uh, so this is where it starts to get exponential and it starts to become um, really tedious to add each subsequent filter. Because if we go back to our code, uh, what we would have to do here is first define a single level filter like this for our topic, then define a sec two level filter like this first with the year and the topic, then with the region and the topic, and then define a three level filter, which is the archive, the year, the region, as well as the topic. Uh, and so already you see the number of URL rules you'll have to add to add one extra filter is a lot. And, and if you were to go back to our template here, now in the templating logic, um, we, we are querying for the year, which we will have to continue doing. We're querying for the region, which we will have to continue doing. But then we will have to start also querying for if something like if topic is defined and then, you know, again, um, get the topic like uh, from categories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I see that feeling of this is starting to feel complicated. <laughs> happening yeah it's and a, uh, uh the and, and and say you 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 get your um uh topic here then then another complication that comes is that now you've got to before you can just go ahead and add it to your query like we did region we've got to make sure that we don't uh, overwrite our previous related to condition because uh, in line number 20 we've added a uh, region to the to the query if if we just did uh, something like if topic is not null and and did a so what we've essentially done is that if someone has specified both the region and the topic the topic will always override the region so now we've got to add in logic here to check that you know does region also exist if they, it does exist then chain it uh, in a way that both region and topic are taken care of but if region does not exist then only add related to and so forth. So uh, verbosity as well as complication keeps growing. And if you have a fourth one, then yeah, it gets really mad. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think uh, I see the transition happening to your, your hard work here with the plugin. 
That's right, Ben. So um, we decided that uh, the, the logic here was fairly similar for each criteria. We need to validate whether that criteria is a valid criteria. Uh, for something like the year, we, we don't have to validate it because we're just treating all four, four digits to be valid years. Uh, for something like a region, which is supposed to be part of a, an entry section or something like a topic, which is supposed to be part of a category, category group, we have clear ways to validate them, which is, you know, uh, uh, see if, if an element with that slug exists. And if it does, then add it on to our query. So we decided to um, take this away from our twig template and put it in, um, in a configuration file along with the URL rule itself. And uh, so uh, we've created a plugin called the craft router. I'll just um, show you uh, what the plugin is. So the plugin that we created is called router and it allows us to uh, simplify the, the process that we just saw of archive 2018 in Asia and beach. Uh, so I've gone ahead and installed this plugin on the, the starter project. Um, and I'm going to show you how we can use the plugin to, to achieve a functional uh, URL with three or four levels of filters pretty easily. So let's, let's go back to the code. Now here, uh, very similar to our, our routes.php file, we have a router.php file inside which we define a configuration uh, parameter called rules. Uh, and inside the rules, we then go ahead and define our URL rule. So uh, the first segment is called archive. So we start with that. And every segment after the archive is an optional segment. Like the year is an optional segment and it's a criteria. The in region is an optional segment and it's a criteria and so forth. So we, for those, we, we, we um, go ahead and add a segments key. And we can use the same exact same uh, expressions that we had here. We copy over the year and that can be one of our segments. Then we copy over um, in region, and that can be one of our segments. Oops. And we can also add um, um, offers and topic as a third filter. So these are the three segments that we want uh, to be uh, uh, appended at the end of archive uh, and it follows the order that you specify them in. So, so the URLs would be potentially uh, archive or archive slash 2018, uh, 2019. It would be um, archive slash 2019 slash in Asia, um, archive slash just in Asia as well. Uh, then archive slash 2019 slash in Asia slash offers beach uh, and archive slash 2019 slash offers beach as well as archive slash offers beach and finally archive slash in Asia beach. So by this little depth this little declaration that I've done, uh, I, I've added support for all these URL combinations because each segment is optional and it chains. Now, um, now craft, uh, the plugin will create URL rules for each of these, but it doesn't know yet what to do when it finds a year or a region or a topic. So the next thing that we've got to do is, is define that. So we do that using the criteria parameter. And in this, uh, our first first parameter is year. So let's set what year is. Now our year is of a type, which we, uh, so there are the, the plugin supports a few different types of filters. Um, you can see that in the plugin documentation here, um, where these are the different filter types we support, category, entry, field, search, section type, URI, year. Uh, so in this case, we are going to specify year to be of a filter of a type year. And um, uh, you can also specify which field it has to act on. 
by default, you probably wanted to act on the post date field, but say you're using a, a separate field, like say you've created a section for capturing events and you've got a start date and you've got an end date and you want the year to, to work on the start date field. So you can very well come and change this to start date uh, mm -hmm. or post date. If you, if you don't specify a field, it will default to uh, post date. So I'm just going to remove, uh, sorry, remove the field from this one because the default is post date. Uh, the next next uh, uh, filtering criteria is region. So we define region. Now this one is of type entry because each region is an entry in our system. And it's an entry on the section regions. So what this does is it tells the plugin that if you encounter a region in the URL, then do a craft.entries query and try to find an element with this the slug uh, and the section handle regions. And mm -hmm. if you do, then add that as a page parameter. And the third one is topic. So for topic, we uh, now the topic is a category. So as you might expect, this one gets a type category. And in this case, we want to specify the category group. So the category group is called topics. And finally, when, so first you match the URL segments, then once you have these parameters, you validate them. Uh, this one's an year, this one's a region, uh, this one's an entry, this one's a category. And uh, then send all of this to the template specified by a regular template path, which is archive. But this time we're gonna use a special version created for the router plugin. So our previous, um, archive uh, template had this logic for year, uh, region, topic, but um, I've created a, a separate archive, which is uh, the router archive version, where um, this, this uh, file will automatically get the following from the router plugin. Uh, an entries variable, which is a uh, craft dot entries uh, with the uh, appropriate querying parameters and um, here if set topic if set and as well as region if set. So the instead of craft this was earlier craft dot entries but instead of that i'm just going ahead and uh using entries here for my query because it already has uh, the uh, after before uh condition set it already has the topic uh, related to parameter and the region related to parameter set and in addition to that i'm adding a section criteria and i'm limiting them to 10 entries and and in my page title i can then put out the year if it is defined so i can go here uh, if the year is defined, if the region is defined, and if the topic is defined, and I will now go back and comment out the the previous uh, URL routes that we had we had declared because we want the the ones by the plugin to take over, and now we go to our browser and. Okay, wait a minute. So that's the the year that's working. Uh, we can also see what URL rule is is being matched, and uh, uh, you can see the 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 particular route being matched here is from the plugin uh, Miran slash router slash controllers. It's no longer the the route that was defined uh, by us in our routes.php file. And it, it first looked for the archive route, um, but it did not match that. And then the second one it found was the year and matched that. Then if we go ahead and add region, it has found the archive and the region and it has matched that. Uh, if you look at our URL rules, uh, this is the one that it matches. And now if we go ahead and do offers history, there we go. We now have a set of entries in Europe, which are historical uh, locations, which have historical uh, interests. And if we look at the URL rules here, 
it has matched the, the third URL rule, which is both the end, the year and the region and the topic. And now if you wanted to remove the year from this one, so now you, you're getting all, all the archives, uh, all the entries in our blog, which have uh, Europe and history uh, tagged. Um, so this is from 2016. If we remove Europe from here, then we get all the places that have some historical connection, which right now just a coincidence happens to be only European places. Uh, and if we do just say in Asia, then we get all our Asian stuff and we can do um, offers a beach here. Yeah, all of these three have beaches um, and we can add uh, 2017 maybe here and now we get just the one entry from 2017 right so that's how uh, we've had a chance to simplify um our wait a minute simplify our our uh, url rule uh, rule definition as well as our templating logic to just a declarative thing in our configuration and it just works and it, it passes the, the the right variables onto your templates so you can take them and use them right away nice easier to read the templates you can build the urls however you need to within your templates or search box yes. however however you're designing that and you're handling all this stuff behind the scenes so. Okay. so if you're if you're up for it would you mind, I, I always like to ask the question of like, so how does this work? And one of the things we've been discussing in Craft the Planet recently is just routes in general and the broad landscape that they they take place in. So would you mind, I, I'm sure your plugins got plenty of, you know, logic to handle the different conditional stuff, but I think on the topic of routes, it would be interesting to see where you are registering your plugin to start handling the routes and where you mm -hmm. are returning the variables to the page once you finish processing the routes. So we don't need to see all the, the middle stuff, but perhaps you could show us kind of the entry and exit points of how a plugin gets into doing its own thing with routing. Uh, so that's a, uh, that's a great point, Ben. Uh, so let's just take a look at the plugin code to answer that. And um, this is our entry point uh, in the router plugin. Uh, and in the init method, we register an event listener for the register site URL rules, very self-explanatory event. Um, when that event is fired by craft, then it calls the register URL rules method um, on our plugin. And what we do in this method is we read the configuration that you have defined um, in, in this router.php file. We combine uh, all the different segments and, and build out all the possible combinations and add each of these as individual URL rules. And then we, we point the action for these URL rules to a custom controller. Uh, we don't pass them straight to the template render controller. We, we pass them to a custom controller, which is in the, the Mirage router plugin. Uh, now in that controller, um, you, you land up on the action index method. And what this, met, what this method does is it, it starts out with an empty entry query. So right now it's just, you know, uh, crafted entries in, in Twig or entry uh, find in PHP, which has no conditions on it. Then we loop over all the different um, criteria variables that have been captured in our URL. So let's take year, for example, if year was found, so that would be one of the filters. And uh, when we loop over that and we see that it's an year filter, then we add the year filter as a condition to the criteria. If we find the region field filter, uh, we add that as a condition to the criteria. And, and so uh, when this loop finishes, it, it has added all the different criteria that it needs to for to this entry query. And then we set this entry query as a, at the entries variable uh, in the variables array. And we also set each of the filters in the variables array and we eventually call the render template method which then uh, uh, renders the template that was specified and passes in all our filters as well as our, our query, which is now built up with all the conditions right to the template. Nice. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think it's important to 
as we all have our custom development needs, it's nice to kind of understand where where we can we can take over the craft logic and give back to our pages and help keep our templates simple, which in this case you're doing for us. But as we are developers and eternally curious about how things work under the hood, it's it's nice to see where the structure of this is built. And we know that you've got a lot of uh, more advanced logic in the middle of your plugin there helping helping us out along the way. Yeah, this, this whole thing, which is, but let's just like say it does its thing right now. <laughs> the code is all on GitHub, so you can go and take a look uh, to see how exactly it's working. Awesome, Pratik. This has been a, a really good tour of uh, your plugin and also a really great example of how we might run into a scenario in Craft where the default routing becomes more complicated than we want it to be and, and we might pursue a custom solution. Thank you very much, Ben, for this opportunity to uh, demo the plugin, and um, and I really hope people find it useful. Uh, uh, it's it's good for for small blogs, like I said, like you know, small use cases like a blog where you just want to have maybe a year and an author. But it's also really great for when you want to have something uh, where you have a whole bunch of different filters, like like a job site, or you know, um, if you have different kinds of categories on on any any section. Um, and it's very helpful.